Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Let's Associate, a collaboration between Associate Women in Cricket and Women's Crick Zone. Joining us today is an upcoming star of the German Women's National Team, or the German Golden Eagles, Emma Barga, who is well known for being the first player, male or female, to take an international cipher. Welcome, Emma. I'm Emma, I play for the German Golden Eagles. I'm a right-handed off-spin bowler. I'm in high school in year 11 and I'm 16 years old. That's great. So can you please start by telling us how you first got into cricket? Yeah, so I'm from a family of cricketers. My grandma played for England when she was a teenager. and My mom used to play in England. And when I was 10 years old, she introduced me to a youth team in Munich. And I played there and I learned the basics of how to bowl, how to bat, throw and catch for about six months. And then the team collapsed because the coaches couldn't take on that sort of responsibility, coaching so many younger players and also having jobs. So that had to stop. And I wasn't old enough yet to play for the women's team. So I stopped for about two years. But in between that, I used to play in the garden and on the beach and everything. So then when I was 12, my mom noticed that there were younger children, and younger girls playing for the Munich women's team. So she decided it would be a good idea for me to go to a training session and see if I liked it. And I did, obviously, and I've been playing ever since. That's brilliant. So can you please describe your journey into the German women's national team or the German Golden Eagles, as you will like to call it? <laughs> yeah, so when I'd been playing for a year for Munich when I was 13, I was invited to go to a national team development weekend, which was loads of kind of potential players just um, training for a weekend with the national team coach and the manager and um, about six months later they were going on a tour to England and I was in England at the time and they asked if I'd like to come play some matches and I said yes and I played two matches for uh, the Golden Eagles in England and then a year later we went to La Manga in Spain but I wasn't initially chosen for the squad because I was too young because I was only 14 at the time so um, I wasn't chosen to play, but then Anu, the captain, she had uh, a back injury and she had to be operated on and she couldn't play. So I was asked if I'd like to come and play instead. And I said, yes, obviously. And then I was asked if I would be okay to open the bowling, which I did. And then I took the first wicket for the Golden Eagles in an ICC match. And I've been playing for them ever since. Oh, that's actually a really great story. Yeah. That's brilliant. And at such a young age. Yeah. Can you please briefly take us through the domestic cricket structure in Germany for the women, of course, and yeah. how this leads into national pathways? Yeah, so we have three leagues in Germany, the South, the West and the North League. And each league has four or five teams in it. Um, yeah, so those teams play against two matches against every other team in the league. So if I was Munich and I played against four other teams, I'd play eight matches because it would be two against each team. So then the winners of each league goes on to the semifinals and then that goes on to the finals. And then the winner of the finals is obviously the champion of the German of Germany for that year. Um, and then going into national pathways. So there's usually at least one national team player in a team. And if that player thinks that an, another player in the squad has the potential to play for Germany, They'll suggest it to Monica, the manager, Anu, who's the captain, or even Michael, who coaches. Okay, that's, a, that's actually a really good system. And it's good to see more associate teams coming up and really strengthening their domestic structure. So obviously everyone would be curious, how do you balance your cricket commitments with schoolwork and having a social life as a teenager? As we all know, you're very young. Yeah, so it is very hard to do because before COVID, I was away every weekend for cricket and I was getting very bad grades in school because I wasn't doing any work because I was playing cricket all the time. I didn't really have much of a social life either because everything I was invited to, I always had to decline because I wasn't there. But now I'm kind of trying to focus on school more and I'm not committing as much time to cricket as I'd like to because going into my final year, I really have to get the grades that I need if I want to go to university and I want to achieve things. 
that aren't just cricket and I think um, socially I'm also trying to do more things with people that I've been kind of neglecting where I, I was playing cricket. Oh. How, how have you found adjusting to a high performance environment at a young age? So I think because we all kind of went and played our first ICC matches together as a team it wasn't like I was an outsider coming into this high performance ICC team. It was like we were all going through everything together and trying to figure it all out as a team. And I think that's really helped because everybody's kind of felt support from everybody else because we knew that it was, it was well, we weren't just alone trying to figure everything out, trying to figure out what to say, what to do. Everybody was helping each other and doing everything together. Yeah, no, that's really important. And this is really common in a lot of associate nations because I feel we may be a bit new to high performance environment. So it's, a, it's, a, it's something we all have to figure out together and we have to work together to develop the culture we want. And so following on from that question, has guidance from senior players and coaches been an important part of you being integrated into a high performance environment? Yeah, so I would think it's been very helpful, especially from the coach and the manager, because they're not, you know, in the team and trying to also figure it out for themselves. They're kind of helping the players as well. And they're always there if anybody needs anything, if anyone needs to talk. And obviously, they're not the only ones you could talk to anybody in the team to ask for support or advice or anything. Yeah, no, seniors are a really crucial part of any sports team. Yeah. And obviously, when you grow older, you may be the senior everybody looks up to, even though now you may be the baby of the team. And what does a typical week look like for you during the cricket season, especially balancing it with school? Yeah, so usually I would play, I would train on a Wednesday and a Sunday and maybe a Friday afternoon. And then at the weekends, I'd be away playing in the league or having a national team weekend or even doing like a coaching course. So I think during the week, I'd really have to work on school and my social life. And then at the weekends, it would all be focused on cricket and going different places and playing different things and doing everything. Yeah, but also as a teenager, that balance is really important. Like, it's really cool that you get to represent your country at a young age. But growing up also, school is important. Social life is extremely important and having that teenage experience. So I'm glad that you're working towards making yeah. that part of your life too. And what do you enjoy most about the game? As we all know, enjoyment is the, one of the most important parts of sport. So I really like that, even though it's like a team sport, everybody's also playing for themselves and trying to get their own personal best and working towards goals. Like, you know, getting wickets, scoring runs. It's like, you're doing that for yourself, but you're also doing it so the team can win. That's a really good answer and pretty mature. It's a really mature <laughs> answer. During last year's series against Austria, I'm sure you got asked this many times, but <laughs> you were the first German international player, male or female, to take a five wicket haul in a T20 international. This is an amazing achievement. So can you please talk us through this moment? Yeah, so before the so the match before I'd gotten three wickets, I think. And uh, so the next match, everybody was telling me that I should get a fiver before the match started. But I didn't know what it me meant because I'd never seen anyone get one or and I'd never gotten one. So I was really confused as to what was happening. So I just tried to I was just playing as normal and I got a wicket on my first and third ball in my first over. And I was like, wow, OK, this is going well. So then I kept bowling and I got five in four overs. And everybody was so excited and running up to me and telling me I'd gotten a five. And I was like, what's going on? I'm so confused. Like, I didn't know what to do. And they were like, hold the ball up to the camera. And I was like, OK, like, <laughs> I'm just going to do it. I don't know what's going on. And then like halfway through the match, it hit me. And I was like, oh, that's what they meant. Like, I get it now. <laughs> so then afterwards, I was we were all celebrating. I was really happy. But before it happened, I didn't know what was going on and what they were telling me to do or anything. Did you just start celebrating randomly after your five? Were like, oh, I realized I got five wickets. Yay. Like in my head, in my head, I was so excited. I was like screaming. But out loud, I had no idea what was happening. <laughs> yeah. It's a funny story. Um, and are there any international tournaments coming up for the German Golden Eagles? 
Yeah, so we have one in July. We're playing against France at our cricket centre in Krefeld near Düsseldorf. And we're playing five matches against them, I think. And we've kind of been like training weekends, starting to build up the training, working towards playing against them again. And because the clubs have started to be able to train again, just on weekends and everything, um, it's been really nice to get back into the gist of everything and work towards playing again. That's brilliant. And do you have World Cup qualifiers coming up? We do as well, yeah. So we've also been working towards that. We have online training sessions every Monday and Thursday as well, which are more fitness sessions to make sure everybody's keeping fit and keeping up with each other socially as well. So we're working towards that as well. It's brilliant. That's like the new COVID thing, is that all new <laughs> Zoom fitness sessions and our instructors like screaming at us over the laptop. Yeah. Um, how do you have any memorable or funny off-field moments with your teammates that you would like to share? Yeah, so when we were in Oman in February 2020, my roommate, who I was staying in a hotel room at the time, Tony and I decided it would be really funny to prank the vice captain, Tina. And because Monica, the manager, had been telling us all week that we should remember to keep our data turned off and make sure we don't get overcharged on anything, we decided to call her hotel room phone using Google Translate and we put this message in saying that you've spent 60 euros on data while in Oman and you'd have to pay it or your data plan will be suspended. So we called her and played this automated like voice message so she wouldn't recognize our voices or anything. But Tina wasn't the one to pick up. It was a different, it was a different player and she panicked <laughs> and she told the rest of the team what had happened and she asked everybody if anybody else had got it. And Tony and I obviously told them that we did so that we wouldn't seem suspicious. Um, so the rest of the week, everybody was really confused about what had happened and wondering and panicking because also how would some outsider be able to call a hotel room phone that you can only connect to via another hotel room phone? So everybody's panicking and starting to blame Kartika, who was our third roommate, who was in the shower while it happened and was completely against us doing it. They all started to blame her and it was great. And then on the final evening, Kartika snitched on us during fines and she told everybody what had happened <laughs> and she told everybody what had happened and we sent in the video into the group chat of what we were doing because we videoed it and everybody found it hilarious and they thought it was great because Tony and I were the quiet ones being the two youngest we're really quiet and we don't talk as much and we don't really make as many jokes and the fact we'd done this was really great and it was really funny I'm surprised you guys didn't get dropped from that. <laughs> Everybody found it great because they were all panicking. So it was also like relief. <laughs> it was relief that nobody had hacked the hotel. Should prank the cat to next time. Just go oh, yeah. to the top. <laughs> now we're on to the best part of our interview, which is the rapid fire round. I'll ask you six questions and just blurt out the first thing that comes to your mind. Funniest teammate? Paris. Paris. Not Stephanie? No. <laughs> She's, funny too. She's funny too, but Paris is so sarcastic. It's just a whole nother level. Must be a very funny team. Must be a good team to be part of. It is. Favorite school subject? Don't philosophy. Say philosophy? <laughs> what? Philosophy. I love philosophy. I could go on about it for hours. I can tell you about every philosopher and all their theories. I love it. <laughs> Okay, that's for another, that's for another <laughs> video call. We won't go through philosophy here. <laughs> that's very interesting. Um, if you had any superpower, what would it be? Oh, to teleport. I hate waking up early. I just think getting to school on time for once would be nice. Yeah, I feel you. If you could have dinner with any famous person, who would it be? Harry Styles. Oh, okay. Did yeah. He's great. <laughs> Favorite hobby apart from cricket? I like to paint. Oh, should show everybody some of your paintings. German cricketer, oh, no. <laughs> multi-talented. Maybe Harry Styles will give you a shout out. <laughs> I wish. And if you could spend a day in the shoes of any sporting hero, who would you choose? Oh, I'd say Anja Shrubsol. Anja Shrubsol. Yeah. She was the first bowler I ever watched take wickets when I was about 12. I loved her. Yeah. 
should be watching the test match now. She's still both. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, thank you so much, Emma. It was lovely to have you. Hopefully everyone could get a glimpse of your cricketing journey and I'm sure you have a really bright future ahead. Thank you.